Hello everyone. Recently I was asked if it's possible to test a capacitor with a cheap meter, uh, not one that has a capacitance uh, testing uh, capability on it. And actually it is possible to test to see if the capacitor is actually working with a $7 meter. This is a cheap meter I bought from Amazon. I'll put a link to it in the video description below. And I'm going to be using it to uh, test this run, uh, dual run capacitor. Uh, this is a 440 volt capacitor from an AC unit, so it will do the job very well. Um, and as long as your meter has a 2000K to 20,000K ohm uh, resistance uh, check on it, you should be able to do the same test on your capacitor, okay? So what this test will do is it will tell you whether the actual capacitor is working or not. All right, before we test anything, I want to do a safety note for everybody. Capacitors are, can be very high voltage devices. These two here for the air conditioner that I have can store up to 440 volts a piece. And I don't care what amperage that's at, that's a heck of a jolt. You don't want to get hit by that. So you need to properly dis discharge these uh, capacitors or any capacitor that you're working with. Okay, it needs to be brought down to zero voltage. And uh, what I use is a voltage dis discharge tool. And this one I made myself. I actually have a video on how to make that. And I'll put the links in the video description below for uh, how to discharge these, how to make this discharge tool if you need to, and uh, how to safely discharge capacitors. Now, um, I again, I can't stress this enough. They're high voltage devices. And before you, you know, before you even uh, test them with a meter. If they're fully charged and you put your meter up to them, you're blasting your meter. Your meter is going to have smoke coming out of it and you might harm yourself as well. So again, please, please, please understand that how to discharge these and that they need to be discharged. So I've already discharged these two capacitors so we can go on from here and um, you know start testing them to see if they're actually uh, valid or good capacitors. All right, the first thing I'm going to cover, and again, uh, I'm aiming my videos at the uh, novice, so uh, please bear with me if you already know this. Um, basically, I'm showing you where to put the leads into the actual meter themselves itself, and you can see that the black lead, and these just slide in there, pop into that uh, into those holes. The black lead goes into the common hole, okay? And you see, it should say "com," and you should see a symbol of like a ground on there. And uh, so let's put that in there. The positive lead or the red lead goes into the uh, voltage ohm and milliamp uh, hole. Now there's an, a third hole here that says 10, 10 ADC. That means 10 amps DC. Okay, so that's for testing high amperage uh, DC current. So we're not, we're not going to de deal with that at all. We're going to deal with uh, voltage uh, ohms and milliamps. So we're going to put that in here. Once you've got that properly set, the next thing you're going to do is uh, turn your, your meter on and set the gauge to the at least the 200K ohm uh, setting, okay? You can go lower, and if you don't have 200K, go as high as you can, and uh, hopefully that'll get the uh, result you need from the meter. So let's take it and uh, start testing the capacitor. All right, I want to stress here that this capacitor has been fully discharged, and uh, what we're going to do here is check to see if the capacitor actually can take a charge. And uh, basically what we're doing is we're going to use the resistance mode at 200K uh, on uh, 200 kilo ohms on this meter, this little cheap little meter, to put 5 volts into this, which is what it's going to do. And then if the, if the resist, if it does exactly what it's supposed to do, which is, uh, you know, start with a low resistance, move all the way up into an open circuit, we know that the actual capacitor is working. So let's do that. Negative on the negative or the common, and then we'll go over here onto the positive lead. And you can see it's taking a charge, and then boom. It's, when it hits 200, it says, okay, open circuit. There's no more left to, to, no more resistance to check. It's an open circuit now at this point because the 0.5 volts that are coming out of these leads uh, can't be, you know, won't accept anymore. So as far as the meter is concerned, it's an open circuit. So here, if we want to test it the other way, we just reverse it. You can see it going down in, neg in the negative. So we're discharging it now, and now we're charging it back up again. We just change polarity. And again, it's going all the way to 200, and then boom. Okay, so we know this capacitor is good, 
it's taking a charge it's doing what it's supposed to do okay now we're gonna do the same thing over here to the other capacitor which is the fan capacitor and you, can see, you saw how fast that happened so I could put that back up to the 2000 K ohm and that, that'll actually slow the process down a little bit so let's go you can fool around with the homage uh, ohm settings to get the result you wish so here we go actually let's go this way there we go I'm reversing the polarity which reverses the charge which basically charges the capacitor in reverse there's no damage on this it's only 0.5 volts and there you can see how that goes all the way to 2000 kilo ohms and then says okay that's it so we know this capacitor is good because it's performing it's taking a charge and doing exactly what it's supposed to do storing it okay so if you see your capacitor performing that way this is a good capacitor okay i will test it with a regular uh, multimeter in a minute so you can see what the actual values are here and uh, you know again this test only tells you that the capacitor is working it doesn't tell you what kind of capacity it has it just says hey it's taking a, it's taking a charge and storing it what it's supposed to do it's a capacitor right so good capacitor no problem there let's go with a with one that I know is blown okay this one here and uh, you know if you want to know if a capacitor is blown first thing to look for is damage this one has uh, uh, the top of it is all uh, bulged out it's bubbled uh, up I don't know if you can see that at that angle or not but it basically has a big bubble you can see the dent here uh, if you see a leak on them or if you see a crack in them or if the bottom is bowed out or any part of the, the capacitor uh, has uh, something that looks like out of place or basically wrong uh, then you know uh, don't even bother just replace the capacitor this one here looks like uh, a soda can that's been left out in the sun basically it's it just it's done this is definitely a bad capacitor but we'll run the same test on it and we'll see what we get so common go here on the common go to, to uh, uh, Herm first and we'll take it down to 200k there nothing dead again nothing dead we can check the, the reverse polarity on this thing if you know just to make sure nothing again and we'll try the reverse polarity on this sun dead so that capacitor is toast now another way a capacitor can actually uh, uh, self-destruct is by shorting to ground or to shorting to the actual casing itself okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate that here and show you how you can test for that. There we go, like this. Now if this shorts the ground, what you need to do is take your, your ground here, like so, and we're still in the ohms, and this over to, to, to the lead. And if you see that happen, where the meter goes to zero, zero, that's a closed circuit. There's no resistance there. So basically, at this point, you would know that the Herm side of this uh, uh, capacitor has shorted to ground. Okay? There we go. Like that. And I guess it's corrosion here causing me not to get a good connection. But again, there we go. So that's how you test if it's shorted to ground. If you see that uh, uh, situation in a, in a uh, capacitor, you know it's toast. Okay, so we're gonna, you do the, you would do that on all three leads. Again, make sure it's discharged. So let's try this on the other leads. See if we got anything that's grounded to the casing. Nothing there. Nothing there. But I can simulate that situation easily just by taking my my uh, alligator clip and making it happen. And you get that zero zero. So zero resistance means it's a closed uh, connection. Or basically it's shorted to uh, whatever you're testing so it's the same as being on on the cap all by itself but uh, if any of these leads cause this to happen then again you would know this capacitor is shorted to ground or to the casing it's toast it's done right and any physical damage will also show you that it's toast or or done so that's how you test to see if the capacitor is actually working correctly or not also Make sure you test that, do that test from, and I didn't on this one, we'll do it right now, 
and that is test from each lead to ground to make sure that it's not shorted to ground. So this one's good. So you would put your negative lead on the case again and again. And even on this one, it's not shorted to ground. So any of the three leads, if they short the ground, then the thing is done. It's shorted to the casing of the, of the capacitor. It's no, no longer any good. So those are the two tests. You test for, you test for resistance rising and then just like this. And when you get to 200K, of course, it's going to say, hey, that's it. I can't measure anymore. And the same thing on the other one. Well, okay, let's reverse it because obviously it's already charged. There we go. Same thing happens there. That happens. You know you've got a good capacitor. It's not shorter to ground. You know that too. Okay, now I'm going to test this capacitor with a meter that's capable of testing capacitance. All right, now we're going to test for capacitance. Uh, this actual meter can test the, the uh the capacitance on these uh, on this capacitor and tell me what the actual value of the capacitor is which as far as i'm concerned is, is it's a little better than actually knowing that it works not only does it do you know it works but you know it works correctly uh, with this test with the cheap meter all you know is that the capacitor is actually storing energy it doesn't tell you whether it's storing the right amount of energy but hey Knowing whether it's working or not is uh, usually 99% of the uh, problem anyway. So uh, this cheap meter was about seven bucks on Amazon. This meter, which is the Tech Power TP8268, uh, was 19.99 on uh, Amazon, and I thought it was a great value. It was the cheapest I could find that did capacitance. So. Uh, if you want to buy these things, I'm going to put the links in the video description below. You can uh, just link directly to those uh, or, you know, click on those and go directly to the buyers I bought these from. Now, let's turn this thing on. We're going to turn it on and put it on uh, capacitance, which is this uh, symbol here, which is actually four different symbols. So it basically has four functions. Uh, we're going to change the function to uh, farads. There we go. We're in farads. And this does have a light on it. I don't know if it makes a difference. Yeah, you can see the difference that light makes. I'll leave it on there for now. And it's it's auto ranging, so you don't have to set anything. You just basically set it to uh, uh, farads and then rock and roll from there. So let's take it and uh, test this out. We're going to put the common on it here. And we're going to go to Herm. And this should be 70 plus or minus uh, 5%. So when you're testing for farads, you need to wait a little second as the capacitor charges. The light automatically times out. Okay, that's cool. And there we go, 69.1. So it's within the 5% uh, variance that uh, the spec for this uh, capacitor. So now I know it's absolutely a good capacitor. Before I had suspected that it was a good capacitor. The other uh, uh, meter would, would told me that it was functioning uh, okay. And this actually proves it. So for an extra 12 bucks, you can get a, a, a nice meter that does this for you. But again, if you're in a pinch, you can use that cheap meter or a cheap meter to do the ohm test on it and figure it out that way. Let's go to fan and do the same test here. And fan is much lower. Uh, it's uh, microfarads 7.29, which is supposed to be 7.5. So that's within the 5% again. All right. So there's the actual end value on that. And uh, basically, uh, testing it with a uh, $19 meter, you can see the difference, right? You actually know that it's actually charging to the right, uh, you know, specified values. And if you got one of these, you'll find the values on it right there. There we go. There. On the side of the can, it actually has them. Seven and seven. 70 and 7.5 uh, microfarads plus or minus 5%. So that's the value of having a uh, capacitance meter. But again, if you don't have it, you can just use a cheap meter to do the basic test. Okay, let's test the dead capacitor just for kicks with a meter. See what we get. Dead. Okay, let's try the fan side as well just for kicks. dead so we know that's a bad capacitor that's it for my video showing you how to uh, test a capacitor using a cheap 
uh, meter. Now, if this is all you've got and you've tested your capacitor and it fails, this is all you need. If it fails the test that I show in this video, you've got a bad capacitor, go and replace it. Now, if it passes, well, more than likely you have a good capacitor, but to really, really tell whether you, it's within specification, you'll need something a little more advanced like this Tech Power TP8268 uh, for $19.99. I got this at Amazon. I'll put that in the, uh, the link to that in the video description below, as well as a link to this cheap meter that I also bought for $7 at Amazon. And then you can get it from the same supplier that I got it from. Now, uh, that's it for my video. If this video uh, helped you out or if you like this video, do me a big favor and give me a thumbs up in the bottom hand, uh, right hand corner. Uh, and I appreciate that, number one, and it helps my videos, number two. Now, somewhere on the screen here, you'll see a picture of me. That picture is a subscription link. If you click on that uh, picture, it'll subscribe you to my channel. Also, when you're subscribing, you'll see a little bell beside the subscription link. If you click the bell icon, you'll be notified every time I put up a new video, and then you can watch it at your own leisure. Now, uh, as always, I want to thank you all for your time and for watching.